the intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund is all about. The Intrepid Foundation, it, it, it's hard to describe it as a thing. It's really a force whose mission is to remind people that if you send people to defend your country, you need to take care of them as if they're all heroes. The Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund has been at the forefront of helping treat one of the most devastating injuries of modern warfare, traumatic brain injury. TBI is a traumatic brain injury, and essentially that's when biomechanical force is imparted to the brain and creates an injury, and it can be a physical injury or it can be a functional injury. The symptoms of traumatic brain injury include anxiety, depression, forgetfulness, bizarre behavior, and we believe that the military personnel deserve the same level of care and treatment and concern that a civilian would experience if they decided they needed help. And the home of love. The UFC has partnered with the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund to raise more than $14 million from two Fight for the Troops events. This money helped fund the construction of the National Intrepid Center of Excellence in Bethesda, Maryland. Count of three, one, two, three. And the recently completed Intrepid Center of Excellence Satellite Center at Fort Belvoir. We've got this National Intrepid Center of Excellence. It sits in Bethesda, but not everybody lives in the Washington, D.C. area. So having satellites is going to be very helpful. It's going to reach out to many more people who get their treatment in the National Intrepid Center of Excellence. They'll be able to go back to their home base, back to their home community, and continue their recovery. Two satellite centers are completed, but seven more are needed. With your donations, these brave men and women can finally get the help they so desperately deserve. This is not charity, this is duty. We feel that the men and women of, American, of the American military um, deserve the full, active, vocal, uh, caring support of everybody in this country. This is a victim, a mother, a fighter. I was in an accident in Iraq. It was a head-on collision. And pretty much that's all I know. On June 10th, 2003, Private First Class Claudia Isla suffered a major head trauma when the Humvee she was riding in was deliberately struck by an enemy vehicle. The incident left Claudia's memory severely impaired. When Claudia returned home to her newborn, Sandra, she struggled with the basic responsibilities of motherhood. I will forget that she needed to eat or she needed to be changed. And I will forget Sandra at the store. When I got injured, I can't understand why. It was so difficult for me to know who my mother was, who my brothers and sisters were, and that I had a daughter. Ella tiene daño cerebral. Tenía memoria de cinco minutos. Ella no recordaba nada, no sabía quién era, no sabía quién era yo, quién era su hija, no sabía. Claudia finally sought help for her amnesia at an inpatient facility, leaving her young daughter in the care of her mother for over a year. When I came back, uh, Sandra was almost three years old. And, and I, it is difficult for me now to think that I, I met my daughter when she was three years old. Ready, set, go. We were able to rebound together as mother and daughter, and, and she is very close to me, and my children are the best blessing that I have had in this world. Now with years of treatment, Claudia has improved dramatically, but still needs some assistance. I will set up my cell phone all the important things that I have to remember. Jose Mario, Sandra, time to go to school, sweetie, please. You know, taking the kids to school, picking them up from school, taking them to the dentist. So my cell phone is my second best friend. 
With your donations, soldiers like Claudia will not be forgotten and get a second chance at leading a productive life. I don't have all the memories that everyone can have, but you know what? I realize that every case is unique, but if it's in your heart to recover and, and you keep a positive attitude, you can achieve what you are aiming for. As we've said earlier, Mike, we, we have had two so far. Life, but unfortunately, that was far from the case. It does get frustrating, uh, you know, that people will look at me, you know, and they'll be like, oh, you're fine, man. You don't struggle. You don't have any issues. And it's like, well, if you came and lived with me for a week, you'd realize that I probably sleep for two hours a night and I'm in consistent pain every day. On January 19, 2011, Army Staff Sergeant Spencer Milo was on foot patrol near the Afghanistan-Pakistan border when a suicide bomber detonated his explosive vest. My entire body felt like I had got hit by a train. Although Spencer was hit with shrapnel, he did not appear to have a serious head injury. When he came home in spring of 2011, you could definitely tell he wasn't the same. He had a lot of anxiety. He was frustrated a lot more. You know, he would at the you know snap snap of a fingers. You know, something would just make him mad. I had seizures, lots of memory loss, a lot of cognitive issues. Um, my balance was off. The migraines were just out of control. When local treatments were exhausted. Spencer was sent to NICO, the National Intrepid Center of Excellence, where he received specialized treatments for his TBI. They have all different types of treatment modalities. They have, you know, sleep therapy, relaxation, art therapy, things like that. And they had service dogs there. Service animals are just an incredible resource that I don't think enough veterans get a chance to use. Part of Spencer's treatment at NICO was the adoption of a service dog that will bark if Spencer has a seizure. Just having him with me in air, you know, crowded areas and stuff, he helps me feel calm because I'm focused on him. Uh, he helps me sleep a lot. My nightmares have not gone away, but there are less of them now that he sleeps with me. I'll never give him up. I mean, he's uh, as much of a piece of this family as anyone else. When he came home from NICO, it was nice to see a little bit of the man that I met back in 2007 back. And uh, once we had Zoe, she definitely changed him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, Duval. I always wanted to be a dad, but I was scared to death of it after this injury. I was really afraid that emotionally I wasn't going to be able to connect. But you know, honestly, all it's done is just given me a new reason to, to get better. I really think people need to start paying attention to some of these invisible injuries because there's so much of it out there. If they're not brought to the front, you know, no one's ever going to take care of it. Uh, the stories are amazing, but they're true. And that's why we need your help at UFCFightForTheTroops.com or call 877-747-HERO. Moran at Fight For The Troops at Fort Hood, Texas in 2010. And now three years later, with the support of so many, he has improved drastically. I got shot by friendly fire. In 2011, Army Captain Pat Haran was one of five soldiers with traumatic brain injury featured in the second UFC Fight for the Troops broadcast. Pat's brain injury occurred on July 7, 2007. He was on patrol when an Iraqi soldier confused him for the enemy and opened fire. The doctor was think that I got shot right in here. And um, they took off of half of my head. Totally gone. When Pat was first featured on the second UFC Fight for the Troops, he had difficulty performing the simplest tasks. TBI has affected Pat in so many ways. He used to be one of the most athletic people that I knew. Oh. Oh. And now he's kind of in the background. I have to make all the decisions. In some ways, it's 
kind of like having a child. They said I'd be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. They said I was never going to talk ever again, that I wouldn't know my wife. Today, Pat has exceeded every expectation of his doctors, thanks to the treatments he's received for his traumatic brain injury. I just think the brain is a lot smarter than people think. <laughs> current challenge is still Pat cannot drive, so he still needs me for transportation. He also has trouble communicating still, reading and writing, so a lot of times I'm helping him formulate emails, but he's gained a lot of independence in the last few years. One therapy he can take the bus to, which is on his own, so um, we're getting there. Slow down, slow down. We're a team. We've always been a team. It's our life. So the more that I help Pat recover, the better our life is. Can you try it again? TBI is humongous. It's not like one problem. Like me, I kind of knew it because I was missing half of my head. They knew that I had problems. In some ways, he was lucky to have such a focal injury because they understand where in the brain it is, what it affects. But these multiple blast injuries, they, they just really don't know how to treat them, need better diagnostics. I'll see you guys. There's just a long way to go. Please donate today and help other soldiers like Pat recover from TBI. It's real as we sit here amongst the brave men and women. I guess you'd say I just cheated death. I, I don't know how else to put it. On December 27, 2004, Army Staff Sergeant Todd Damaris was on combat patrol in Iraq when his Humvee struck two IEDs, pummeling the vehicle with shrapnel. The big one hit me in the top of the head, left me with a fractured skull. He had probably 100 stitches in his head because it was uh, ripped open pretty, pretty good. Two weeks after the attack, Todd returned home to his family. I was completely helpless. Couldn't do anything by myself at all. He had severe vertigo and fall, horrible memory problems. His head was pounding 24-7. It was very challenging. In time, Todd's physical injuries healed, but it was clear to Marty that Todd was still struggling with emotional and psychological problems. He'd lock himself in a room for 20 hours a day and do nothing. Um, our toddler would knock at the door and dad, dad, and dad, dad never responded. This was nothing like what he was before. I was crying and pleading with him. I really think you need to go talk to somebody. I'm really concerned. And his quoted line was, why for all these problems you think I have? And then uh, just completely out of the blue, said, I don't love you, I've never loved you, and I want a divorce. I wanted nothing to do with my wife or my kids. Uh, I thought they were much better off alone. After a couple months of trying to salvage our relationship, I eventually uh, retained a lawyer and started the paperwork to, to do a divorce. Finally, one day, I decided to go to the hospital and get some help that I needed. Todd was recommended for treatment at NICO, the National Intrepid Center of Excellence. That would be the first time that I got an MRI on my brain that would show all of the places that I'm having problems with. It really made me say, see, there's a reason why my husband acts the way that he does or why there's so many things that have changed with him. Josh, your turn, honey. And you were almost home, too. No. Not fair. Eventually, Todd and I started communicating better. And one day, we just decided that we're going to make things work. And we actually burned the divorce papers. Although my husband's story is unique to us, we're not special. We're just one family, and he's just one service member. There are thousands more service members out there that need the same type of help that NICO can offer. 
I'm joined by the vice chairman of the Intrepid Foundation, Marty Edelman. And Marty, you see the story of Todd Damaris, his wife talking about that it's not just them. They are just one of many who suffer from these severe injuries. That's right, Mike. We have thousands and thousands of troops coming home, all who have experienced traumatic brain injury or post-traumatic stress. And it's nights like tonight that you're going to give us the opportunity to help these kids and equip them to come back into America again. You had a great line earlier tonight in one of our pieces where you said it's not charity, it's duty. Right, Arnold Fisher says it's the duty of every American. And if we have Americans like you and Dana White and Lorenzo Fatita, we know we'll get our mission accomplished. Expand on that a little bit, because this is our third fight for the troops, and it really is a unique relationship. Frank and Lorenzo Fertitta, Dana White, the UFC, and the Intrepid Foundation. It really is. We met them about four or five years ago when we opened the Center for the Intrepid in Texas, and ever since then, they've been passionate supporters of what we're trying to do, which is really only to repay these young men and women. We asked them to go to very difficult places, fight very difficult wars, and we have a covenant with them that if they're injured, we'll repair their lives. You know, what they really are is they're great athletes. The athletes here come and fight. We send these kids out, and sometimes they're wounded, and they continue the fight. We owe them that when they come home, we're there for them. There's no question about it. Marty, as you look at the process that you've gone through over the years, how far have you come and how far do you need to go? Well, over the years, we've raised about $200 million to support the troops and their families. We need another $55 million to finish the program for traumatic brain injury. And then maybe we will turn all these buildings into garages. Who knows? Marty, it's a pleasure, it's an honor, and we're humbled to be here tonight to try to raise funds for your great cause. Thank you. Mike, thank you very much, and thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, yeah.